Hello, my name is Evan Sanchez, and I'm the Educator Support Manager here at the Science Penguin. Today, I'm going to guide you through a tutorial on how to utilize your Boom cards. As you know, STAR 2.0 is upon us, and students are assessed differently than they have been in the past. Our Boom cards are going to be able to provide that assistance for your students to get them well prepared, and they'll also have fun along the way. Stay tuned. All right, so I'm going to guide you through our boom cards that I have here available. We're going to look at the Earth and Space Science ones for this tutorial. Just know that you may have purchased them through an individual set. You may have purchased them as a bundle set. Or if you already have the fifth grade bundle, you're going to have all of those included that we have created so far. We are planning on adding additional ones, and we will let you know on our social media when that occurs, or you can always go back to your Teachers Pay Teacher store, and you can re-download it at that time. All right, so why are we using Boom Learning? Well, the days of multiple choice are over, and so this is going to allow us to use various question types that help students prepare for the standardized test. The cards are very interactive, and they're also self-checking, which is nice because we know that students like to get feedback on how they're doing right at that moment. You can actually make an account and play the decks for free. But if you want more advanced features like student accounts or maybe you want to do some student tracking, those are only going to be available in a paid version. You can use Boom cards either through the Boom app, like through an iPad, or if you have Chromebooks, for instance, they can go to the web-based version at boomlearning.com. So in order to get everything ready to go, you're going to need to get access to it we're going to look at the link that you see here. When you first come on, if you don't already have a Boom Card, Boom Learning account, you will hit the Create button. If you already have one, you can just sign in with your credentials that you have already. Let's pretend that we go to the Create. All right, so you're gonna see that we have a teacher sign up. You can sign up with your email, your Google credentials, Microsoft credentials, or even Clever if that's available for you. Now, I'm going to go back that page, and I'm going to pretend because I have already made an account. It'll give you kind of the same situation, and I'm going to go ahead and hit Sign In with Google. And once I sign in, I'm going to show you what it looks like on the inside. Now, additionally, it will ask you, are you for sure this is you? And then it'll have a little red button that'll say Redeem. And when you hit the Redeem button, what that does is it puts it inside of your library. Now, I have some other Boom cards that I put in here just for this tutorial's sake as well. So up here, you're going to notice that you have a lot of great instructions. There are even additional tutorial videos if you really want some more um, features to just watch and see for yourself to kind of reiterate things. But I'm going to try to get you through some of the biggest parts that are pretty critical. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my membership and my settings so you can kind of get a glimpse of what you are going to be offered when you first sign up. So in the beginning, for instance, I signed up on November the 18th, and I have kind of like a promotional period that's going to end on January 17th that I'm going to have to pick a specific account eventually. Now, with the promotional level that I have right now, I actually have a class limit where I can have five different classes, and I have up to 150 students that I can assign to. So let me show you what the memberships look like based on after that time in January where you may have to make a decision. So again, you can keep the free account and you have this option that's called fast play. And I'll mention that one in a little bit, what that means. Fast play just means that your students are going to be able to play the boom cards. You just wouldn't get any kind of reports to see how they did. And your students wouldn't be able to really go back and see like, okay, let me see which ones I got right and which ones I got wrong. Um, it's more so a free play. And we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit more in a, in a bit. So you have five students with one classroom and you can have five decks. Now with the essential level, you can have up to 150 students with 17 classrooms, but again, you're only limited to five of the self-made decks. With the premium version, you can start out at 150 students, 17 classrooms, and you have an unlimited self-made deck, and the publisher um, does a little bit more as well. Okay, so um, on here, you can kind of just see there are different features. You get a seller's license if you want to be the publisher. So a lot of people who really want 
those reports um, most likely would go with like an essential or maybe premium version depending on how many things they really do need. All right, so we're now back in our library and we're going to see how we can assign these to our students. So with the Earth and Space Practice one, you'll see that you have this little action button. The action button, you have different options of how you can assign it to your students. One way is to do the fast pin. What the fast pin is good for is it gets your students on them quickly. They don't have to have any kind of an account. The only thing that you won't have is any kind of um, report that you can get from how they played and the students wouldn't be able to really reflect on how they did after they finished all of them to see their common mistakes and errors. This is also a great option if you want to put it on your whiteboard or screen and you can have kids come up and do the answers along the way. So when you click on the fast pin, it does give you like a little code. That code can be used where the students go to boomlearning.com and when they go there, they'll see a button that says fast play and they'll enter the code. Now you can also provide them the direct link and when you do the direct link like such, what happens here is, is your students will be able to play it with no problem, okay? So the great thing, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what they look like. It'll have sound effects which they can turn on or off if they want to. We are now adding audio to it for students that need it read to them. So when they click on the little audio feature, you can hear the person reading the question out to them. For this example, let's listen in. Some of Earth's processes are listed. Which of the processes are not needed for the formation of sedimentary rock? And your students can hit stop if they need to take a little break and then they will be able to hear the rest of it be read to them. So when they select the two answers, for instance, on here for sedimentary rock, we know that we don't need to have any kind of burial of organic matter and we don't need any kind of cooling of lava. So when we hit submit, it tells you if they get it right or wrong. Same thing here. They'll have to drag and drop where the planets are. And so we know that this would be Venus, okay, Earth, Mars. And let's just say they put Mercury by chance here when they drag it in there. And you'll notice that it has to kind of turn that purple color um, so that way they know it's in there. So when they hit submit, oops, okay, it'll tell them, uh-oh, you messed that up. So you can they can hit give up, but you can always tell them, you know, when you're kind of modeling it, let's try it again. As we know, we want to learn from our mistakes. So Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, and now we've got Jupiter. And so we can hit submit, and then we can go through there. There are some buttons to skip, um, you know, if they don't want to uh, do that one at the moment, they need to come back to it. So that's also another option for them. So they'll have all of the boom cards that they get to practice, and then they get to see the results at the end. So that's kind of a glimpse of those for yourself. Now, if you're wanting to go ahead and you want to assign it for a class, this is what you're going to do. So right now I've started my first classroom, but we're going to actually go into more depth of how to make a class. All right, so we're gonna take a look at how we can create classes if you choose to go that method. At the very beginning, you can change your name. It may be just kind of a generic name, so you can change it to match what you need it to be. Um, just remember that you're only allowed five different classes right now with the certain trial period that you have. Once you go to the free one, then you're limited to just that one class. There are different ways that you can add a classroom. Some of them can be from, you can import it from your Google Classroom if you use that, if your students have Microsoft accounts, and then they may have Clever or ClassLink depending on what your district has set as approved apps. Now for me, I didn't have any of those options for my students, so I had to create my classroom manually. So when I make a brand new classroom, um, what happens is it creates it. So you are going to see that you can add one student or add many students. And let me kind of talk about some of these things here beneath it so you can kind of get a glimpse of how classrooms work. Um, if you have young students, obviously you would need to set up their accounts using one of the add student buttons above, meaning just adding one student at a time or many. 
For older students, you can post the classroom username and the password that is given here on the whiteboard or email, and then you can let the students configure their accounts if they choose to do so. By the way, it says you can change both the username and the password of your classroom using the status bar above. So up in here, you can go to the settings and you can change that if you want to make it something a little bit easier. So that's just another option. Again, they can configure their own accounts if you want to go that method. Um, brand new classrooms, they are always going to be locked and they're going to be set to private by default. Locking a classroom, what that does is it prevents students from creating um, new accounts or even changing their nickname. Um, students in a locked classroom can still change their avatar and their password, but only teachers can change a student's username. So to help students who share a computer as well, maybe you don't have one-to-one, -one, there are two privacy settings that you can also put it on to. It can be in private mode or it can be in not private mode. So if you have it in private mode, so that means when a student signs out, no other students' names are going to appear. But if you have it on not private, when a student signs out on that device or on that Boom Card website, the classroom page will just show all of the students' avatars on there. So that's kind of a preference that you want. So since I would have many students that I would need to add for my class period, and again, you can edit the name to be your liking of choice, I'm going to go ahead and just add many students. So I'm going to go ahead and put some uh, people in there. I'm going to put Greg. I'm going to put Abby. I'm going to put Michael. Okay, just for a few. So um, you can put a default password for them. So maybe I want to just put on there, boom, make it simple and easy. So all students will be able to create their account with this password um, and you'll share it with them so that they can change it when they log in. And if ever a student forgets their password, um, you're going to see you can reset it from the classroom page and I'll show you that in a moment. So I'm going to add those students in. So at this point, it's going to generate a username for your student. And remember, all of them are going to have the same um, password at that time, which is boom. So like I mentioned, you can go right here. Um, this is where you can change their password if you need to. You can remove them from a class. Um, and maybe you want to just move or copy them around as well. What I did with my students was I hit the print roster QR code. I put all students in there and I would print the rosters. And so what I did was I would hand them out for my kids. They got the instructions right there and they knew exactly what to put in there. So they would put their username and then I give them their you know, generic password and they could change it if they wanted to at that time, okay? So that's a way to add a classroom. Remember, you can add another classroom up to five uh, while your period trial is at this point. All right. so. The next thing that you can do is, is now we're ready to go assign it to that class. So I'm going to go back to my library and instead of doing it through the fast pin, I'm actually going to do it through the assign. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and assign it to that class. So that way they have it. So in a moment, I'm going to pretend that I am a student and I'm going to log in using that student's device. And then you'll see a report come in at the end. So when I go to the reports, you're going to select the classroom that you want, okay? So I'm going to see I have one person's report ready to go. So you can see for Abby, her average is a 69 after we applied the points that she earned on her assignment. It tells you how many times she played, what was her best, and what was her last attempt, and then her final average. So when you go to her, you can click on her name and you can go and see how she did on each of her questions. So if you see a blue little speaker, that just means that um, there isn't a question on there. It's just kind of a you know title slide. Obviously, the green ones mean that she got it right. Anyone with a red X, you can click on it, 
and see what she answered originally and what she answered eventually. So even the ones where they gave up, remember they do count that wrong. So they chose this one, but then the true answer was this one, okay? Same here, you can kind of see that the student, how they answered and what they got wrong along the way. So, and then it'll also give the responses of how they did on here as well. So again, that's by point base, so you're not gonna really see a check or an X. That's graded manually for yourself. Now, another thing that you can do for her as well is, let's say you wanted to delete her log and maybe she really just didn't give a good, you know, effort on something, you can click delete all student logs and it'll reset it for her where she originally will just look at the assignment to uh, be completed. So that's a little look about boom cards. Again, they are very interactive. My students have always had a lot of fun. You can add them along the way. Just remember that you have the free version for a short time and then it is, you know, has some premium features, but you can upgrade it or you can keep it free. Just know you won't have all of the features that you may want to um, have for your students. All right, so I hope this has been helpful, and if you still have any questions, please let us know.